Mine is over in uh, Isaiah chapter 61, verse number 3. We was reading through these at, just at the morning, Connie and I and Nancy, and I think Nancy maybe had, was reading this particular chapter. But this, this verse, I thought, it just, it just touched my heart, and I think it's good for, for all, well, all the verses is good for all of us, say the least. But it says, to appoint unto them that mourn, and to give them uh, beauty for ashes. Isn't that a good trade? You know, ashes is what's burned up. To give them beauty for ashes, to give them the oil of joy for mourning, and the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, that they might be called trees. The planting of trees of righteousness, the planning of the Lord, that he might be glorified. And so he's trying to get a hold of us and get us out of the, you know, the tears in our coffee and all of that. He said, I'm going to swap with you. Beauty for ashes, the oil of gladness for mourning, and the garments of praise for the spirit of heaviness. And people's going to look around and say, God planted you. Wow. And I thought about, you know, there's all given us that passage of scripture in Psalms, he's going to be like a tree planted by rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither. And whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. Wow. And that scripture says they're going to be called trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord. Because when we're in the mully grubs, we don't bring honor to God. We've got to pick up. We, we live beyond that by the grace of the Lord. He's wonderful. But I love that he's going to give us the Garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. Man, you remember that song was saying, shake off them heavy bands. Sometimes your walk, if you're not real careful, you get so weighted down with what you're doing, your walk with Christ is like, this is, this is hurting me. That's when we got to shake, shake the stuff off and say, you know what? I'm doing this as unto the Lord. I'm, I'm not going to let the devil browbeat me until I get down in the dumps over my walk with Christ. Wow. If I've sinned, God forgive me. Let me get up from there. Give me the beauty for ashes and the joy for mourning. Yeah. Make your bed up and take off like a scalded dog. Say, Woo, we're leaving here. All right. Here we go. We're going to be in, uh, <clears throat> which one of you four men is the best reader? All right, one of you read for us. Off of your, off of your, don't put it up there yet, baby. This is, this is going to be Hebrews 13, uh, 9 through 16. So one of you read the first three verses of that, 9, 10, and 11. You can use your electronic device if you need one. If you don't, I've got a Bible here. You can, okay. Okay, start the next one. If you start reading in verse number 12, read 12, 13, and 14. Okay, Sonny, would you read 15 and 16? Okay, now put it put it up on the board, baby. Let's look at it just a minute, and we, we're not going to stay a long time on, on these first uh, three or four verses. But our, the rest of our lesson kind of ties in here in verse number thirteen, well, twelve through sixteen. But uh, Cotton, on on verse number nine, what what would you what would you think about this?
Okay, baby girl, what, what do you think? Give me some help. Okay, exactly. Well, what if we get carried away? You, 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 lose, you lose your spot, your, your groundwork with God, you know, if you just get carried off in something that's crazy. And it, it's not uncommon. You see people all the time that's got trouble. Uh, Cotton, he, he, he says here, divers and strange doctrine. Uh, what do you think about strange doctrine? Do you ever hear anyone at school or anything like that? Anything that's uh, different? Or is, it, is everything just pretty, pretty much the same or you don't hear nothing? Okay, a lot of different things. Okay. And so in, in those, where do you pick and choose that? How do you know what's good and bad? Okay. That's good. That's exactly right. And so if we can take those common thoughts and, and work them into our everyday life, say, well, this is good, this is bad, and just leave it there. And what, don't, don't, try to, don't try to bring it to a place where I can get to where I can like this. That, that's, where, that's where sin comes in because you know uh, they, they call it, in, uh, in the studies, they call it palatation. And that means that you can put enough salt on anything, you can't tell really what you're eating. And uh, sin, you can fool with sin until it becomes pal palatable. I can't hardly say the word. Until you say, well, I guess it's not that bad. And friends, that's almost where the American, I'm not talking about the people, I'm talking about the church. The church has almost got to where they, the, the palatation of sin has risen up to a 90% mark. Where there's no, no, there's no different. Uh, I, I was talking to the, the girl of the day, that, and I told you this Sunday morning, but uh, she's helping teach a Sunday school class and all kinds of stuff and living, living out of wedlock with her boyfriend. And, and, you know, somebody is dropping the ball. And I, I'm not against the girl. I love her. I'd love to see her make it to heaven. But you can't shack up and be right with God. If that, if that won't work in the jail, it won't work nowhere. And so it's got to be dealt with. that have come up in the churches and this one girl who does not go to church a lot but she reads her Bible and she said something and I thought man it was so good because she said I have learned that what, whenever I want a truth the only truth I can find in this world today is to go to the Bible. Oh. She said, I can't believe anything else that anyone tells me. That is so the true. The only truth I can find is scriptural is truth. Scriptural. That is it. And it's, it's not going to change. And this, this is our way to Christ. Uh, would you look at, at a St. John chapter 12 and uh, scroll down? It's going to be probably pretty close to the end of the chapter. But what it says is, I didn't come to judge this world, but these same words... These words that I have spoken is going to judge you in the end. Knowing that, knowing that you can't get an inspection sticker without your lights working and your blinkers working and your high and low beam working and your, come on now, and your horn working. They even test your tires. If, the, if, if they're getting an inspection and your tires are getting a little bit skinny, well, they, they got a little deal. They can tell you got to have 30, what, 330 seconds or something? Do, do you know, uh, Jonas, how much? 30, 33, okay. Anyway, you've got to have so much rubber on there for them to give you, to, to say that you can drive your car on the street. That, well, that's just good business. I mean, them, them, uh, them, ball, them ball tires, you, they ain't no telling when they're going to give out on you. So something needs, to be, something needs to be done about it. Okay, look at this scripture. He that rejecteth me and receiveth not my words hath one that judgeth him. And what is it? Is Jesus judging us? Look what it says. The word that I have spoken, the same shall judge him in the last day. Knowing that, man, that, that's why I, I love the, that discipleship uh, material that Brother Hunt's letting us use that starts with, blessed is the man that walketh not the counsel of the ungodly, won't stand in the way of the sinner, and will not see, sit in the seat of the scornful. That's where he starts off in discipleship, trying to help them see that we, we want to walk away from where we was, and let's go to following Jesus. But his delight is somewhere else. What is it? 
Yeah. His delight is in the law of the Lord. And in his law doth he meditate just on Sunday once a month. Now, he says day and night. He's, he's meditating on it day and night. And if he does that, what happens? He shall be like a, a tree that bringeth forth his fruit this season. That's talking about them. How many ever been to California? Anybody in here ever been to California? One, two, three, four. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Man, a bunch of you. H have you been there when they were producing uh, the fruit like uh, peaches and oranges and uh, lemons? Yes. Now I did. I didn't see. Uh, Nancy was telling me this morning that they that they got big old trees with grapefruits on them. <laughs> I mean, I never thought about where grapefruit come from, but I never seen it. How many's ever seen a grapefruit tree? <laughs> You got to live in California. <laughs> Did you know there's folks out there looking for cotton probably, but yes, ma'am. You see one? Well, I've never seen it, but I have seen a lemon tree. I, we, we pulled up there. We were going to get some strawberries because they were gathering strawberries and you could roll the window down the pickup running 60 miles an hour and you, you could just smell like, it smelled like sugar. <laughs> Give me. <laughs> Man, we pulled up there to one of them stands and they had just boxes of, of uh Strawberries, boxes of cherries, them, them, uh, them little red cherries, real, I mean, I, all kinds of stuff. Peaches, and, and they, ha they hadn't been uh, picked green, you know, and they're ripening on their way the 800 miles or 2,000 miles from California to Snyder in the back of a truck, you know. No, these here, this, these was ready to eat when you picked them. And when you bit into that, it was like, Whoa! What happened? <laughs> How come we hadn't been eating this kind of strawberry? Well, if they put them in a box out there and ship them out here, you know why. Because <laughs> they'd be rotten time they got here, probably, if they was ripe out there. But anyway, it was a totally different system. You know, if people could really get a fresh fruit off of us, wow. If they could say that's not yesterday's salvation, they they've been close to that that uh, they've been close to that sugar tree today. His name is Jesus. Whoa! And let the fruit, the joy, the love, all, all of that come out of their life. Man, uh, he said. So what this guy did? He cut up some you know some peaches. Uh, I, I don't know what all. Do y'all y'all remember? Y'all was with us. Uh, Chair. Yeah, anyway, and he said, y'all want to try some? Well, we bought a box. <laughs> like the kill us trying to eat all of it for a rub, and man, it was neat. And just, and we looked like them little gophers, you know, when they get their mouth from blue and blue. Which you can... <laughs> Big old fat chick, man, it was, it was good eating. Yes. Okay. It was good. It was a good experience, yeah. And you know what? That's what people need to see. Like that scripture that she was reading the other day, and that just started rumbling in my spirit. We need the joy instead of mourning. The beauty for ashes, that our, that our, that our countenance would be a beautiful, and we'd look good. Now, I'm not talking about, you know, purdy in the mirror, but purdy for the eyes to see from the, the joy of the Lord. And that garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. Man, I, don't you just love to be around somebody that's always moping just down? Well, I'm just down in the dumps. So, I mean, it's time to leave that. Get on your plane and leave that world, man. Say, I'm going to Jesus. Not, not that people don't have trouble. Who don't? I mean, you can look around. I mean, this stuff happens all the time. I, you know, I, I would just today just give you an idea that... that uh, I'll guarantee you, every one of you got something like this, but where, where I turn in there to put the back hole and, and the forklift and stuff up, the other day I just parked up there on the ditch, and my pickup don't have a mercy brake on it, and it's a standard, and it was cold, real cold. It's about 23 degrees. So I just left it idling, and I left it sitting up there, and I didn't think it was going to go nowhere. I now it's going to walk down there and open the gate. And <laughs> kidding me. I look. Just as I open the gate, here come the pickup. <laughs> and it hit the fence <laughs> and bent the pipe out like that, you know, uh, like not, not, the, not the gate, but the, it hit the side of it because I, I was going on to town, you know, so I just pulled over enough off the road, but that thing, it went on over the hump, come down there with me and said, no, what? <laughs> 
Well, today I was out there, you know, I got the back hole out and put it on one side where, where the, the, I wouldn't bend the pipe plumb over the other way, and I got the forklift on the other side, and I said, Meh. Now, that post, it was like that, it went, mm. We finally got it straight enough. It sure didn't look better. And then after I run into it with the pickup, I couldn't hardly close the gate, you know, because it bent that pipe around with the latch wouldn't work. I said, oh! Well, you, you can live in turmoil or you can say, you know what? The joy of the Lord is my strength. I mean, that's small stuff. One of these days, all that mess, somebody come by there with a dozer and just get the hold of this and said, we don't like pipe, we like something else. I know them what they'll have with them, but anyway. If, if the Lord tears is coming. So don't, don't let uh, bad stuff get over into your spirit and pull you away from God. That's what he's talking about. Don't be carried around with strange doctrines. He goes on to say in verse number 12, Wherefore Jesus also that he might sanctify the people with his own blood, suffer without the gate. I, I really in, enjoyed this because to get your handle on it is that they carried him outside of Jerusalem to crucify him. And they did that because that was showing the disgust that they had for Christ. Guess, guess who he was with? He was with the thieves. Yeah. The other ones that they were killing. So it's like discard. Discard this. Yeah, trash. Get this out. Get this away. I mean, it's so far out there. It's called the place of the skull. Golgotha. Wow. Wow. And he's, he's inviting us because he went out. He's inviting us to go to the place that, that people say, oh, that's, that's the discard. But from there, what does he do? He brings life to the whole world. Woo! Everything about Jesus revolves around the cross because Jesus died to, to take our sins and to fix us where we don't have to bear our sins, but he bore them for us. And we can, be, we can become the righteousness of Christ. Uh, so, some of y'all, uh, maybe Jake, you had that scripture here a while back in uh, 2 Corinthians, what is it, 5, the last verse? That uh, I, I know some of you know that, you know, the, the 17th verse says, uh, uh, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature, the old things have passed away. The next one says that, uh, Yeah, no, that's good. Yeah, yeah the old, old, old things have passed away. Behold, all things become new. And, and then that, that verse, uh, yeah, Ver, verse 18 talks about us, the reconcil reconcile. Look at that last, la the last one, that, that God made him sin for us who knew no sin, that we might be made something. There it is. For he hath made him to be sin for us. Wow. That's why they put him outside the gate. I mean, he was like, we're going we're gonna to fix this one time and forever. Crucify him. That's going to stop the whole business. Not only did they crucify him, they got him. Well, Joseph of Arimathea put him in the tomb, but they got him. They got him some some soldiers, mm -hmm. and and they went to Pilate and they said, "This guy said he in three days he's coming out of that grave." He said, "We're going to stop that." He said, "We know what they what they're going to say. His disciples are going to go down there and get him, and then they're going to say that he arose." And we're going. He said, "Well, make it as sure as you can." So they go down there and they seal that rock so that if it was moved, it would break the seal. They would know it. And they set a guard. <laughs> and guess what? Here comes Jesus anyway. Woo! And this is the glory of, of our world. We, we burst out of the bonds like Jesus come out of death, the grave. We come out of the same grave. That's why, that's why he's given us beauty for ashes and joy for mourning and the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. Man. And so we don't live in that, in that lost world of heaviness and Down syndrome. And I'm not talking about people that's born that way. I'm talking about Christians. Don't let the devil beat you down. Why? Greater is he where? That lives in us than he that lives in the world. No. That's it. Yeah. He come, you remember whenever he come and visit the disciples, they had the door locked on him. <laughs> they, they couldn't keep him out. I mean, right through the door. He goes, whoa, it's scared of death. Man, did you know he's in here tonight? Jesus is right here in this building today because he said, we're two or three gather in my name there 
will I be in their midst. And here's, here's the glory of the Lord. I mean, he was so shamed, but he, he overcomes the shame and the lostness. And that's, if we're going to be like Christ, what are we going to do? We're going to run around the mud and grub and say, whoa, what I got is wonderful. <laughs> wow. I don't know uh, who was telling the story. Uh, was it in your Sunday school class? Uh, maybe Nellie, did, did she tell it in, in Sunday school class about that guy that was so happy and they're asking him, what are you so happy about? Yeah, that was dancing. He was, who, who they was, were having a, a service and during the song service, there was a man in the back who just kept jumping and singing and waving his hands and carrying on. And after it was over, the preacher came and asked him, said, man, you really got it going. He said, oh, yes. He said, they have come into my village. The Muslims. Yeah, the Muslims had come into his village, and they had killed his friend. And he said, I survived. And, you know, because they killed his friend because they were Christians. And he said, I survived, and I will sing, and I will praise the Lord. You talk about a different perspective. They killed his buddy, but it, he said, Lord, as long as I get yeah. to live, I'm going to bring honor to this Jesus that born me. Woo! Hallelujah. I thought, boy, that's precious. Well, where, where did, who was telling you that? On, I didn't know if that was in Nellie's uh, Sunday school class or what, but I remember you, I think you were telling us Sunday. But I, I just think it's so precious for us to, to beat the devil. It, you know, it, it would, it, he, it'd be easy to stay down all the time about everything. I mean, that's, what, that's where the devil wants to take us. But, man, you, you get one of them brand-new fresh cherries that's ripe and it's put in your mouth, and you go, when you bite it, that's like, whoa! <laughs> that's good. <laughs> we went down into, the, what's, the, what's the, the town? Let's see, I was trying to think. It's on the south end of California, and there's a, right on the water. Uh, San Diego. Yeah, it is, San Diego. We, you, when you go down and over, the, over the mountains and down in that valley, that San Diego Valley, uh, or San Fernando Valley, I don't remember what they call it. Anyway, we, we got down there, and I told we, we was in a motel. Well, what can you see in the motel? I mean, I mean we got out of the pickup, you know, with the motel, and I mean, there's houses. I'm, I'm looking for something. I mean, I, that's like putting you in a, you know. I told Peyton, I said, come on. I said, we're going to go find us some fruit. <laughs> So we went driving around, and uh, she got on, uh, on uh, and it, this is where a series dangerous. I'm going to tell you what, man. We found this fruit stand, and it was in the back alley. I mean, it, it was, there wasn't enough room to drive, to drive the pickup through that one window. There's you know, cars trying to go back and forth. And uh, I said, baby, that, it says that thing is right there under that garage door. And I went over and raised that door up, and they had a store back there. And I said, I want a pineapple. And he said, we just got one left and it's got a bruise on it. I can't sell it. But he said, I'll tell you what I will do. We'll just cut that thing up and eat it. And he said, and I'll give you some to take back with you. So he chopped that spot out of it that, that was bruised and sliced, sliced that uh, fresh. They just got out of the field. That fresh of uh, pineapple. Man, when you bite it, it's like, I know y'all going to be hungry in a minute. Well, what, 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 this, what this is all about is what if you're so fresh in your walk that you're, you're running over into people's life? And they, they're saying, what do you own? What, what did you just take? Yeah. And if, you, it, you know, if Jesus is that precious to you, look, look where you get to live. That's the victory. And so to go with him, man, is, is wonderful. He says in verse 13, let us go forth therefore unto him without the camp bearing his reproach. It's verse number 13. And so if you live for God, there are people that points the finger and stuff. I mean, wh what is that in light of what Jesus done for us? I mean, it's nothing. And so we just pass it off as though I'm, I'm not going to, you can't kill me. <laughs> I'm going to live like that guy. They killed my friend. I'm going to rejoice as long as I live. I'm so thankful to know Jesus. Woo! They, they're telling, but uh, Chris, maybe you're telling us about uh, the, the girl that, that, that shy won. Was well, he the one that's telling us that she's, uh, now she's going and, and uh, helping people? Uh, I don't know. What, what, what? Okay, maybe that's what it was. Yeah. Yeah, what's wrong with her? She's supposed to calm down. <laughs> I know, it's been two years. 
Yeah, isn't it good? Isn't it good though? You're still excited about what God is doing. Whoa. Together like this entire program of how to win the whole world. <laughs> Having and, and like stage presence and all of that to implement it. And she's gone to her church and they're doing it. And oh. it's like taking off. And available for any church. Ah, I love it. That's precious. Excited. Yes. You, uh, you can't just do him like a new toy, you know, a motorcycle or a gun or a horse or a new washing machine, whatever. You know, after you've used it two or three times, it's not new no more. It's like, I've done it. But you can't do Jesus. Yeah, you can. I mean, people do. But what we want to do is say, Lord, we're leaving here. We're going to rejoice in the things of God. Okay. What he talked about, the way to kill false, false teaching is with truth. And so when we get to Jesus, uh, the reason that we have the hope in him is because he lived a sinless, perfect life. He secured a perfect righteousness and he became the perfect and ideal man. He set the standard for us. His footprints are there for us to walk in. And so whenever we, you know, whenever stuff comes up, say, well, in your heart, you say, Lord, how, what do I need to do here? How do I need to deal with this thing? And you know what? The Lord's going to talk to you. He's going to love on you. He's going to help you get by, get by that stuff. It just, uh, it's real. Well, when you're dealing with humans all the time, you, you, you need some skill <laughs> to, to deal with them in a way that you can leave it as clean as you can. I mean, there's some people just, you know, plumb agnostic, but uh, just the Lord, the Lord helps us get through life and, and uh, to leave a good a taste in people's mouth as good as we can. So note, note the words that Jesus said, he suffered without the gate. Meaning that he was put away shamefully. And so that, that's why whenever we recognize that Christ died for us, Jesus said to take up what daily and follow me? Take up your cross daily. The cross is like, it's a death, it's a death symbol. That this is not about me no more. Everything I have belongs to somebody. It belongs to Christ. And for that, I, I want to I wanna honor him. I, I was talking to the men in jail a couple of weeks ago. And this one guy, he's probably like 40. And, you know, people, when they age, most of the time, they kind of get away from. Uh, it's, you see more young people in jail than the, than the older folks because they've learned. You know, they just, it's not. And this guy's probably about 40. I mean, I felt sorry for him. I don't have no idea what he's in there for. I never ask. It don't make no difference. But uh, as I was talking to him about the Lord, I could just, I could see that the Lord was dealing with him. And there were just tears in his eyes. Uh, because, you know, the Bible, you, when you read the Bible, and we, we was reading over there about the, the virgins in uh, the 25th chapter of uh, Matthew, 10 virgins. And I asked him, I said, how come five of them didn't go to heaven? What, what's that about? And so when we, when we started dealing with that, I said, it, they, they weren't mean. They weren't, they weren't criminals. They weren't lawless. They, they just got cold. Cold enough that Christ meant nothing to them, not even enough to keep their lamp burning. And they slipped off into eternity without God. You know why? As he came, they were not ready to go. So what does he say? He says, what I say unto one, I say unto all to watch and be ready. That means your lamp must be burning. And for it to burn, there's got to be some oil in it. And that takes time. There's got to be some reading. There's got to be some prayer time. There's got to be some church time. There's got to be some fellowship where we uh, rub shoulders, give scriptures to each other. Yeah, we, we need that. We need to sing the songs of Zion together and hear the music and in, enjoy the things of God and just, just, just forget about the world for a little. I know we've got to work and eat and all that stuff, but man, sometimes we need to come and fill up our spiritual man. And fill him up with the good stuff of God. And that's what, that's what keeps us going. A vehicle without fuel, how far is it going to go? It's useless. I don't care if you give $10,000 for it or, or $110,000. If, if you don't have no fuel for it, it's, it's, it's no good. They said in the Depression, the only way you could tell the poor people from the rich people was, the poor person had one car that was broke down with no tires. And the rich people had three, tar, three cars that was broke down with no tires. <laughs> Because when the stock market fell, they, they, had, they went from, you know, having thousands of dollars to nothing. It was, my granddad was caught in that. He had his money in the bank in Hermalee. They closed the bank. He never got his money back, my, my pop Reed. And so uh, he, he survived. He was farming. He, he survived the deal. And uh, from then on, he banked in the ground. He had him a bucket. Nobody knew where it was. 
But when he bought a cow or a tractor or whatever, he'd go out there while nobody was looking, get the money out of the bucket. I'm going to guarantee you when he died, he still had some money. <laughs> I mean, if, if you looked at how easily your money could be lost today, it, it, it would blow your mind. I mean, they, they can just do one little click and you, you just erase those numbers that's out there in the air somewhere. Yeah, and, and maybe maybe cash is not going to always be good. I'm I'm not saying that there's a there's a there's a perfect way to do it, except right here. What you invest in this, heaven and earth will pass away, but my word will not pass away. And that's why we want to go with Christ. We need to go to the cross pretty regular, Lord. Whatever's in here that's not going to live forever. I mean, beyond beyond what I have to do, Lord. Let me let me keep my business in in this circumference of Christ. He goes on to talk about here that the believer's duty, and he, he puts out four things. I'd like for you to get these down. Uh, we talked about it just a little bit last, uh, well, it's been two weeks ago now. <clears throat> four things. Number one, the believer must go forth to Christ and bear his reproach, and this is why. That his own religion and righteousness amounts to nothing before God. So we leave the way we think. If our thinking was right and it don't and it don't go with this, is our thinking going to be eternal, Brother Thompson? If it goes past the book, has it got hope? No, it's got to be what the Bible says. And we, we were talking about last week, and I thought these boys might might get about of this. But the only reason that Cain killed Abel was because he had his own religion, and he wouldn't leave it. Jesus comes to him and says, Cain. Or, the, or God, the Father, says, Cain, why are you mad? If there's, if there's a trouble, there's a reason. And the reason is sin lies at the door. All you got to do is just do what I told you. Just get you a, a blood sacrifice and uh, the thing will be cleared up. Instead, what does he do? He's not going to change his religion for nobody. He's going to offer... The stuff from the garden, it don't matter. He's a farmer. He wants what he wants to offer. So that's all he's going to do. He ain't going to do what God said. And so he goes down there and kills Abel. He said, I'm going to show God. And, this. and he tries to tell God, am I my brother's keeper? He said, well, let me tell you something, buddy. Your brother's blood is crying up from the earth to me because of what you did. Put a mark on him. Well, that all, all over religion, look at the battles that's being fought in our world today over religion. I mean, the Muslims, that's real. Killing Christians, you know why? Because one of them believes one way, one believes the other. And so they're willing to do a jihad on, on people just to, hey, our God, that's the way our God is, that's, that's a different deal. So not to be caught in that and, 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 and to make up our mind that we're not gonna let our, our own religion mess with what the Bible says. We're gonna put that to the side. And that, that's the first one, that sin, that our sins cause Christ to have to die. We've got to own that, that it wasn't just the Jews. We, our sins, my sins, helped, helped put Jesus on the cross. The third thing was that, that the man cannot make a sacrifice big enough or worthy enough for God to accept it. It doesn't matter if you had a million dollars every day and you could give that. That's still not enough to save you. The only salvation comes through, God, forgive me of my sins and let your blood wash my sins away. That's, that's what builds up. I thought, I thought this man was, was uh, strong in, in uh, the points he's putting out here. And that the blood of Jesus Christ alone can make him acceptable to God. We was talking earlier just about that strange doctrine. One of the boys in the jail told me, this has been three or four weeks ago, maybe five now. Anyway. Uh, he was. He said, uh, "You're judgmental. You're too judgmental." I said, "Well, what about?" He said, "Because you said not Allah, not Buddha. I was naming some of the gods. That none of them save. There is no saving power. In none of them. It don't matter how much you worship them. They're not going to save you." And so he was getting after me about, you know, you shouldn't be talking about Allah and Buddha and all them like that. He said, I said, well, Buddha is, uh, I said, have you ever read the Ten Commandments? And he didn't know what the Ten Commandments was. And I said, well, just let me talk to you about the first one. He said, thou shalt have no other God before me. 
And that if you, anything that you put between God and you, that becomes an idol in the eyes of God. If it means more to you than Jesus does, you've lost your walk with Christ. It's like, well, I, I used to be married, but now I've got somebody else. That's, that's basically what you're saying. But you're saying that to Christ. And uh, he said, well, Buddha is the way I get to Christ. <laughs> you're talking about some strange, strange doctrine. I said, oh, no. I said, he, he can't get you there. There's no hope in him. And, and he said, and he's not a God either. I said, well, why do people do like this to him then? <laughs> yeah, and pray. And why are they doing bowing down to him? Because I said, that second commandment, the Ten Commandments is, thou shalt not bow down to any graven image. Yeah, that thing don't move, have life, nothing. No, none of it. And so, we, we want to walk away from that and live in the light that the blood of Jesus Christ alone can make us acceptable to God. So, you talk about clearing out the strange doctrine. Right there, it sorts it off to the side. He gives some scriptures here. Well, he, here's, here's a statement he, he writes in, in, the, in our deal. Very simply, a person must confess that he is a sinner and that Jesus Christ alone can save him. And he must go forth through Christ and live for him. The person must be willing to bear any reproach that might be cast his way because he has accepted Jesus Christ as his Savior. A person must deny himself and take up his cross daily and follow Christ. Going forth to Christ and bearing his reproach daily will keep a person from being carried away by strange doctrine. Man, you stay in the Word every day? Wow. What would they tell you? Jake, well, whenever you went out there to work, what they say about you cussing? <laughs> yeah, about two or three weeks. Yeah, because you know what they told me when I started chewing horses for the public? And, and Cutter, he may be the only other one that don't, but I'll promise you. They said, I, that you've been, you told us you're a Christian all the time, but you go to shoeing horses, I'll guarantee you, you'll be cussing and whooping and kicking and everything else. Well, so help me God, I've never cussed one, yet I have kicked a few of them lazy ones in the belly. <laughs> Make them stand up and get off of me, but, uh, you know, I just laugh at them. I don't, I don't, I'm not going to go back to that world I come out of. I'm free from that by the grace of God. Yeah. Yes, ma'am. That's it. And the sad truth is, is it doesn't matter what your good is. There are filthy rags inside of you. Yes. That no matter how hard you work or anything. And I find it so sad that a lot of times people don't realize that if you tell a lie, then you are a liar. Yeah. If you ever took something that wasn't more for a key. Yes. If you've ever, you know, said something uh, inappropriate, you were cursed. These things that are sin in the eyes of the Lord. That people just overlook because it's just little, little tiny you know, I'm not out there murdering yeah. or anything. <coughs> still, no matter how big the sin is or how small it is, it's still sin. Yes, absolutely. And it broke my heart because I told her, I was like, we need this because of good people with good intentions, they're hell. Yes. They need a savior. Yes. Yes. Yes, and that, that's why we want to coach them. You know, I've, I've been on that side myself as a, as a teenager. I, I kind of backslid and got away from God. And man, I, I mean, the last thing I wanted was a preacher to come and tell me. But I mean, I would sit there through the service. And you know what? What the Bible said is what got me. You bring them up like they ought to go, there come a time they won't depart from it. And I could never outrun my racing. I mean, my mom and dad, they prayed over us, read to us, preached to us, carried us to church every time the door was open. And, and uh, there was a little bit of shunning in my spirit, but it, still I knew that that's the only place it was life. And you look around out in the world, there's nothing out there. I mean, it's like that boy that, that said that he made it to the top of the ladder and only to find that there's nothing up there. Nothing. He got blown to the top in the, in the uh, country western music and said, man, when I stepped on the top of the ladder, nobody's there. And that's the way it is. There's, you think the devil's going to, no, he's going to take you down. I was 46 
six years old before I got saved. And I had been raised in church, brought up from the time I was probably eight years old. You know, and mother and daddy read, prayed, brought, like you said, brought us to church. <clears throat> All that time, the Lord never let me forget. Yeah. I knew what I was doing was wrong. Oh, and yeah. And I did it in. Yes. You know. Right. It, but it was, I never had peace. Oh, no. None. No peace. All those years, mm -mm. I kept doing it. But I didn't have peace. Mm -mm. It wasn't until I got saved. Yes. And that was the very first thing. You know, when people would say, well, what's different now? I was like, you don't understand yeah. the peace that I have. Yes. And that has never changed. Uh, I mean. 25 years ago. It's so wonderful. So wonderful. Wonderful, wonderful truth. There's a scripture here in 1 Peter 4, 14. Okay, Cotton, would you read this and far us off the deal? They're going like, don't say nothing. And you're going like, bring it on. <laughs> Come and tell me. Man, I, I've got a, I've had, I guess, uh, two, two different jailers since I went back. And uh, I, I'll be talking to them, you know, and if they're not getting it, they'll, they'll every once in a while, they'll, they'll chime in and say, well, this is what he's talking about. The Lord, you're working on, on them too, because they got to go from, from tank to tank with me. I said, it's so precious to, to see the power of God move. So th this scripture here, if you're reproached for the name of Christ, happy are you. Isn't that good? Happy are you. Why? Because he, he traded us joy for mourning, garment of praise for the spirit of heaven. T tell me, what, what about the, man, what, what, is the, what is the spirit of heaviness? Okay, the way of the world. Anybody else got some input? Depression. Okay, depression. Oh, clinical depression. Okay. And so, what what do we do with those burdens? Yes. We take them to the Lord. You know, I, I love that prayer time uh, on our text. You can, you can pray over it and, and say, Lord, here it is. I, I prayed. I asked you to, to touch the people. If it, I, didn't you love the report? That boy made it through. They, they uh, worked on three valves in his heart. Uh, Homer uh, Holloway. We prayed for him. I think it was this morning that, that we got the text or yesterday evening. I don't remember. Anyway, I remember us praying over it. And uh, then we got to deal back then and said, Lord, you're so precious. Thank you for touching them. Man. Okay. So he talked about another thing in this passage uh, he talks about is that here we have no continuing city. And basically what he's saying is, we seek one to come, is that there's nothing here that we have that will last forever. We were reading out of the 11th chapter of Ecclesiastes, and it says, be careful with your youth. Do, do all you want to do, but just remember that in the end, judgment comes on everybody. And so if you do good, you get good judgment. And so he just said, young man, just stay, or young girl, stay in, in, the, in the good line. Stay within the, the character of Christ. And then when judgment comes, it's going to be a judging of your life. And they're going to say, is it good? You, what you did is, a, is great. It's wonderful. Yeah. And, and for that to... For that to carry on in your life, that is such an impressive thing because that's, that's what's going to live in eternity. The, everything else down here, it, it can't last, it can't last forever. Here we have no continuing city. Yes, ma'am. Vanity is 
Yes. And um, I'm just kind of dwelling on that too in Ecclesiastes, you know, because what I really do, what I'm doing in this life really making an impact in the way that God wants me to impact people. Am I really impacting my parents, my family, my son, you know, yes. so on? Am I doing what I'm supposed to? Because all of my work, everything is just standing. Yeah. It, 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 it won't last long, will it? No. And so it's good to use what we've got, but keep perspective that it's, it ain't going to last forever. So even our bodies, sometimes the age goes to working on them. <laughs> so he talks about here in Hebrews 11 and 10, talking about Abraham, and this is our heart too. <clears throat> 11 and 10. He looked for a city which hath foundations, whose builder and maker is God. So our eyes are continually on the hope that's out yonder. I don't remember where I got the, the news from, but uh, it's been probably nearly a year ago that the leader of China said, no longer do you serve Jesus. I'm your Jesus. And of all the things that you can teach, if you're going to end the churches that's there, of all the things you can teach, you cannot teach about the second coming of Jesus Christ. You know why? Because that's known as the blessed hope. That whatever they do to me down here, I'm getting away anyhow. Yeah. And he wants them to feel like there's nowhere they can go. He's their last point of contact of life on this earth. But I just want to tell you, that blessed hope is ours for the taking. And Job said, though the skin worms eat my flesh, yet in my body I shall see God. Woo! Man, that, that gives us hope that carries us past. What happens where there's no vision? The people perish. And where there's no hope, it's like, let's give up. We don't have to give up. We can go forward in the name of the Lord. Uh, he, here's uh, the third thing, and we'll, we'll close with this one. The believer must offer the sacrifice of praise to God continually. I think that may have been one thing whenever uh, Nancy was reading that other, other morning about uh, getting off, off that uh, spirit of heaviness. Wow. You know, sometimes you wake up and there's been so much stuff, you don't even know what it is. It's just like, man, I like, where do, what do I do today? It's not that you're lost or nothing, but the devil just trying to pack enough stuff around you. You're so busy and, and you, you got so much stuff done. Or maybe you've done a bunch of stuff and you didn't get it all just right. And you got to, some of you got to redo or something, you know, like you washed the clothes and didn't put the detergent in them or something like that. Anyway. <laughs> so what are you, what are you going to do? Well, we just start over and do it, clean the deal out. And when you get through, it's, you know, when you're proud then, it's, it's, it's over. It's done. Got by. <laughs> and that's where this scripture comes up. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord shall deliver him out of them all. Oh, man. I love it. I love it. And you know what? If it takes a week to get it fixed, he's going to be with you through. That's good.
we're all doing this together. And I said, so me and my mom just went to pray in. And I said, you go out there and you want my daddy in. And everything that is in shall prosper. Because that's what the word says. And she goes out there and <laughs> says, sure enough, it starts running. Come on, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and he said, I'm still, I'm here with you. I love it. We got 70 foot in the ground. Whoa. <laughs> Ain't it good? Who who don't have some stories? Like, I mean, it's, and, and here's a Jesus. He, he's, he, love, he loves us right where we're at. I mean, there's ups and downs. My, my mom was so sweet. I was talking to her the other day. And she said, I guess it was uh, mm, Saturday. No, it was yesterday I started to. She said, isn't it, isn't it neat that I had to break my hip to go back into the ministry? <laughs> she said, she said, I get to talk to so many people about the Lord every day. She said, and, and I mean, here come one of me. She said, this is said, oh my, I'm so proud. <laughs> you know, when you get 93, they, they'll give you a little more time than they do. They, they do me like, yeah. <laughs> And she, she's so sweet, you know, talking to them. And they just like, oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, I know, that's pretty good. I had to break my hip and go back to She's just laughing. She's laughing about it. Woman, oh, what's wrong with you? Now, you know why? That garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. Who, who wants to live down when you can live up in the name of Jesus? Let's stand together. Maybe you have some special requests this evening if you do. Love to take them to the Lord. Yes.